This video is sponsored by Hero Wars. I received an unusual letter in the mail the other day. It had an old-fashioned wax seal on it, and when I opened it, it was an invitation to attend a Mordheim tournament. Now call me old-fashioned, but when you invite me to attend a weekend of gaming set in my favorite Warhammer Fantasy setting, and you put this level of care and detail into the invitation, God damn it, I'm in. The tournament's just a few weeks away, and I have to get ready. So today, we're going to Mordheim. If you aren't familiar with Mordheim, it's a cult classic in the miniature space. Released in the year 2000, Mordheim is a game that takes place in the Warhammer Fantasy universe shortly after the city of Mordheim is half destroyed by a comet made from a valuable magical resource called Weirdstone. Mordheim puts the players in control of vicious warbands, come to the ruined city to seek their fortunes amidst the smoking rubble of the once thriving city. To truly understand this wonderful setting, we need to go back to the days of Warhammer Fantasy and the Old World. Warhammer Fantasy takes place in an imaginary world that's loosely based on the real world in the medieval and renaissance periods, but with room for all the fantasy tropes that we know and love to fit inside. The world map of Warhammer looks a lot like a map of our world, but taken to 11. Instead of North America, we have the inhospitable Dark Elf continent of Nagaroth. South America becomes Lustria, a land of mysterious temples and steaming jungles ruled by the Lizardmen and the Slan Mage Priests. And instead of England, the Isle of Albion is a misty and mysterious island populated by druids, giants, and other fell and horrible beasts. The realms of men are represented by a version of continental Europe. Standing in for France are the knightly realms of Bretonia, an army I have showcased quite a lot on this channel in previous videos. The greatest power in the realms of men, though, is the Empire, a conglomeration of elector states that is loosely based on the Holy Roman Empire, a vastly powerful state in the Middle Ages. In fact, the very name Warhammer is named after the Emperor of the Empire's weapon, Galmaraz, a dwarf-forged Warhammer once wielded by the demigod Sigmar himself. Mordheim is a city within the Empire, and as such it has a medieval-slash-renaissance type vibe, but the comet has done some horrible damage to the city, and so the battlefields of Mordheim take place in the twisted medieval streets among the half-ruins of collapsed buildings. Now, I've always thought of Mordheim as a game that puts aesthetics and immersion above competitive play. Moving a cool warband across a beautiful table is one of the most enjoyable hobby experiences you can have. I personally haven't played a game of Mordheim since the campaign I was playing in Brooklyn got cancelled in early 2020 as the world shut down. I am incredibly excited to dive back into this world. I guess that means I'll need to recruit a team. But before we do that, let's take a moment to look at today's sponsor, Hero Wars. Hero Wars is a mobile game with a big Halloween event coming up, trying to open a portal. 10,000 people install Hero Wars between now and Halloween, the portal will be opened and prizes including 160 Amazon gift cards will pour forth. To participate, just download the game with one of the tracking links, complete a short in-app tutorial, sign up for a free game account and in-app ID, and you're off to the races. Sweepstakes is open to non-registered users of Hero Wars, legal residents of the 50 United States, 18 years of age and older. No purchase is necessary to enter or win, there's a limit of one sweepstakes entry per user in-game ID throughout the sweepstakes period. Sweepstakes drawing will be on or about November 2nd, 2022, and the odds of winning of course depend on the number of eligible entries received. The list of the winners of the sweepstakes and their in-game ID and nickname will be published on the website HeroWarsPortal.com. Hero Wars is a fun game. I like the bright colors. I typically like things that are dark and grim, so I appreciate the little change of pace with the cheerful aesthetic they went for. So click on my special link in the description and download Hero Wars before October 31st and get a chance to win some amazing prizes. Thanks Hero Wars for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back to it. So the rules of the tournament stipulate that you can only use the OG warbands. These are the ones that are published in the original rulebook. The original warbands are Witch Hunters. Sisters of Sigmar, Cult of the Possessed, Skaven, the Undead, and Mercenaries, who were recruited from three different regions of the Empire, the wealthy city of Marienburg, the frozen frontier of Middenheim, and the martial province of Reekland. The tournament I've been invited to features an incredible who's who of artists and creators in the Mordheim community. We have a Discord channel for the event, and people are posting incredible customized warbands and terrain, and so I wanted to have a unique looking warband that brings something new and interesting to the table. When I first got into Warhammer Fantasy, I was always fascinated by the Lizardmen. As a kid, two of my brothers collected them, so they were a constant foil to my Orcs and Goblins army. 
Now, one of the most inspiring pieces that I saw as a kid was a diorama by Mike McVeigh, which featured a lizardman temple under attack from a group of Italian conquistadors. Mike McVeigh is a legend in the Warhammer hobby, and his dioramas are packed with incredible detail. I just had one question. Who are the Estallians? Well, as it turns out, the Warhammer world has many areas that do not have their own army, and Estalia is one of these. Now obviously, the region is inspired by real-world Spain, and the aesthetic of the miniatures reflects some of the iconic elements we associate with Spanish conquistadors and that era. The rough collars, the morions, it's a very cool and distinct aesthetic. And back before my time in Warhammer 4th edition, there were a handful of Estallian models in the Empire range, which at the time could make alliances with dwarves and other regions such as the Italy stand in Tilia. I imagine that back then Games Workshop were less focused on having a copyrightable IP and were more looking to entice historical wargamers into Warhammer, so the more real-world history they could reference and include, the better. In 5th edition, the Empire became more focused on the Germanic Landesnacht aesthetic, and the Mediterranean influence of Tilia and Estalia became folded into Dogs of War. Dogs of War was a new army comprised entirely of mercenary bands from all over the Warhammer world. Here we got the release of Perazzo's Lost Legion, a group of ruthless mercenaries who were the survivors of a deadly but lucrative campaign in the jungles of Lustria. Rather than fighting the Lizardmen, Rumor was, they had allied with them against a force of undead and had been richly rewarded. The Dogs of War models from this time are incredible, and some of my favourite Warhammer sculpts of all time. Most of them were sculpted by the legendary Perry Brothers, whose talent for realistic and natural human figures made them extremely prolific in the Warhammer, Necromunda, and 40k sculpts of this era. If you haven't guessed by now, I'll be bringing an Estallian warband to the tournament. Let me introduce you to the gang. First up is this imposing figure from Grimforge Miniatures. My captain, Gonzalo Esparza. I named him Gonzalo because Gonzalo is a strong Spanish name and Esparza is after a UFC fighter. With all of my fighters, what you see is what you get, meaning they'll be armed with only the real details that you can see on the mini. This means Gonzalo will have a spear, a helmet, light armor, a sword, and a pistol. This makes it easy for my opponent to know what they're up against, but it also makes it really easy for me to build my roster. I don't have to agonize over what each character has, I just write down what they have. Accompanying Captain Gonzalo into battle are his champions, Hernan Olivar and Diego Perazzo. Diego is an official Warhammer model from the Dogs of War range representing Francisco Perazzo, leader of Perazzo's Lost Legion. I've renamed him Diego to represent an ancestor of Francisco Perazzo, since Mordheim takes place before the events of Warhammer Fantasy. In Mordheim, you can recruit mercenaries to help your band as well. Elves, wizards, dark warlocks, ogres, and many more can all join your warband for a price. I chose to recruit a halfling cook. The official model's pretty cool, but I instead opted to use another model from Grimforge Minis. This is Sebastian Velasquez, aka Chorizo. He's named after Sebastian de Mora, a court dwarf and gesture at the court of Philip IV of Spain, and the artist who immortalized him, Diego Velasquez. If you're wondering why I have all these punny and cheeky names that are references to other things, well, there are two reasons. First of all, it helps me remember their names, which makes it easier to reference their stats during a match. But secondly, and more importantly, it gives them personality and individuality that makes you really care about them. You really feel the thrill of pride when one of your warband takes out an enemy hero, or the agony of loss if one of your warband dies. Everything is more fun when you're emotionally invested, and this helps to make that connection. Moving on, we have the two young bloods, Miguel Corazon de Leon, who I thought had a passing resemblance to Michael Corleone, and Paolo de Palo Alto, because Palo Alto means long pole. Pause. Maybe I'll change that one. Anyway, next up are the henchmen groups, the swordsmen, Eduardo Bravo and Pancho Barba. Barba means beard, by the way, and uh, this guy's named after Eddie Bravo. And then we have this guy, Francisco Manovacia. Remember how I said my guys are only armed with what they actually have on the model? Well, this guy had a crossbow, but it broke off and I lost it. So he's coming to the City of the Damned unarmed. The backstory that I imagine is that he's a drunk and lost his crossbow gambling. He's going to have to pick up the weapon of his fallen comrade or something, the Silly Zaitsev style. So rounding out the group are three crossbowmen, Vasco de la Roca, Juan Aguilar, 
and Francisco Zappa, named for his passing resemblance to Frank Zappa. Now, Mordheim is a long way from Estalia. The logical route they would take would be up the river Stur. So my guys are going to arrive by boat. This boat is the Kog made by Zeterdes, a company based in Germany that specializes in all kinds of awesome wargaming stuff. It's still a work in progress, but I added this forecastle to the front to make it look a little bit warlike and intimidating. In a future video, I'll go through the whole process of the ship. Cogs were used well before the era of conquistadors, when caravels and carex were more popular, but I just don't care. The Warhammer world includes historical features from about a 500 year span of history, so there's room to play around. This cog will be perfect for my Bretonian army too, and keep in mind, Mordheim is in a way a prequel to Warhammer Fantasy. I'm naming this ship the Myrmidia, after the in-world goddess of warfare, strategy, beauty, and honor. I think it's a really cool name. Now when I pull up to the tournament with these guys in this boat, hopefully the other players are as excited as I am. I messaged the tournament organizer just to make sure it was cool that I ran the Estallions, which I'll be playing with the rules for Marienburgers, one of the original warbands. I think their bright colors and grounded human aesthetic is going to contrast really well with some of the grim and horrible creations the other players are bringing. I have big plans for Mordheim in the future. See this? This is the sort of Mordheim table that I can build now. Longtime fans of the channel might recognize some of these buildings from previous videos and tutorials on the channel. I've been using this cobblestone mat printed on what I think is vinyl, and it's okay. It's a little bit glossy and it lacks texture though. What I want to do is build a dedicated Mordheim table. So let me walk you through the plans that I have so far. So, the whole layout will be four feet by four feet. It'll be broken into four sections, each one a two foot by two foot square. These sections will feature detailed roads, cobblestones, and make a great base for a game that won't be too difficult to store. Two of the segments will feature water, with keys and jetties representing the river stir passing through town. I can park my ship right along one of these and other ships as well. Now here's where it gets cool. These pieces will be able to be moved and rotated to create new and fresh layouts. Because the roads will line up in key places, the streets will still line up nicely. I can also potentially add new tiles if I want to expand the whole thing. I also want to have some sewers that run into the river, that you'll be able to enter by cross-section along the side of the table. This will give another dimension to the table that will really make playing on it a memorable and immersive experience. Now, this is not a plan that's going to come together right away. There are several other multi-part series on this channel that I'm going to wrap up before this gets finished, but there will be some concurrent work. Make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss anything. In the meantime, I've been working on some scatter terrain to bring with me to the tournament, touching up some barrels, crates, chests, tables, ladders, gangplanks, and other little detail bits. These add a ton of character without too much effort. I love adding fun little extra details. A quick Google search for a runic translator, some work with a fine detail brush, and all of a sudden, these basic barrels are transformed into casks of dwarfish ale, no doubt rafted down from the nearby World's Edge Mountains. This cask gets a fleur-de-lis, to indicate it holds a fine Bretonian wine. By the way, the catch-all term for these things is not barrel, but cask. Barrel refers to a specific size of cask, and there are lots of other terms for other sizes. Tons, tierces, butts, pipes, drums, hogsheads, etc. The more you know. So with this warband and this boat, I'm headed to Mordheim. I'm highly likely to make a video about the tournament itself, so stay tuned for that. Huge thank you to my Patreon supporters, you guys are the best. And thanks again to Hero Wars for sponsoring this video. A link to the game will be down in the description box below. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next time on Eric's Hobby Workshop.